Hello, hello everyone, and now welcome to a game between Czech versus WFZ taking place here on Amazonia. Let's go ahead and get straight into this game as well, double checking some things real quickly. Um, well, now we're gonna go ahead straight into this game as we now have Czech spawning as the Red Night Elf over here on the bottom left hand side of the map. WFZ spawning over here on the top right. Now, will this be another Dreadlord opening? That is gonna be a big question. Um, as the Dreadlord has become a very popular hero as of late. Undead players for many years had not found the, um, a viable way to try and do fast expansions, but it seems like maybe the progression of the meta being able to have new building blocks and, and just a new set of eyes opening up a Dreadlord first into a fast expansion and becoming a very popular strategy, especially going up against uh, races where they normally try and set up a fast expansion themselves. Let's Your take a look if Czech is going to be going for a fast expansion himself. It looks as though it is going to be a cla or an, I wouldn't say classic, but not too big of a surprise keeper of the Grove. Still a very powerful hero in this matchup. Your building is complete. Now, let's go ahead, head back across. It is going to be a Death Knight. Death Knight, really the go-to hero, or has been the go-to hero for the undead for many, many years. And no surprise, and we'll see how this Death Knight will be leading this army. Ziggurat's now being placed down, and both sides looks like they're gonna be just be playing a pretty standard, straightforward stand opening here. Acolyte purposely trying to make its way over and trying to get some damage onto some of these units, purposely attacking an archer, and then now pulling away. This Ancient of War is actually absorbing a Our bit more damage than he would desecrated. normally would like. And, however, that shouldn't really make that big of a difference here, as you're going to see more creeps getting aggroed through. Archer now making its way. It is going to go ahead and use that lightning shield. It does deal 10 damage a second. Very high damage indeed. More damage, actually, than the archer is doing by itself. As the archer shifts its position, you're going to see the Keeper of the Grove finish off these last couple of rogues. Archer should be backing up. Oh, wow. The archer did not move. The lightning shield could have finished off that last uh, last blow there, but a little bit of a lucky break, I guess, as the well, Keeper of the Grove gets to level 2. Meanwhile, Death Knight now in play here using that lightning shield. Going to go ahead and pretty much try to finish off the Renegade Wizard. Death Knight purposely backs off in time to try and save, deal a little bit more damage. Should be pulling away. There goes a little bit more. And let's take a look. One more rogue will get taken down. Death Knight not picking up that manual of health though. We'll see if he does come back for it. Meanwhile, Keeper of the Grove now out on the move will be making its way over here to the top right. We'll see where that Keeper of the Grove is going to be going and how much damage it can really do as we see a couple of skeletal minions just finish off the Apprentice Wizards. The Keeper of the Grove could actually pick up this Manual of Health and yes, it is going to steal this Manual of Health right there and pretty much saying, you know what? Rather than losing a little bit of damage, um, I might actually gained overall maximum health here. And that had to have come as a shock. WFZ, well, not reading his books. And we'll see if that does come back to haunt him. Keeper of the Grove um, has an extra 50 hit points. So if, if at any point the Keeper of the Grove is able to escape with around 100 hit points, um, I would say... That is a bit of a lucky break there, or rather, well, a little bit of an issue as the Death Knight now makes its way over. Death Knight going to go ahead and try and engage here. Troll Berserker will get finished off. And this is something that I actually really like about these Keeper of the Grove and those Ents. The Ents allow you to summon units next to any sort of tree, so you can close in on distance rather easily. Let's take a look back across over here. Keeper of the Grove going to try and engage. There is a large number of ghouls here, though. And you can see a quick bash onto one ghoul. WFZ losing a unit as the units are now going to try and break up here again. Let's take a look back around the other way. There is an entangle. However, a death coil will quickly save it as we're now going to have the Keeper of the Grove in a little bit of an unlucky break. Is it going to be able to Shadow Meld? That is the question. He's going to try to aggro and then Shadow Meld, but it takes a boulder. It takes a boulder, and that is going to be the issue. Boulder now coming back out across here. Granite Golem, as the Keeper of the Grove, is sitting still hidden in this location right now. Going to try to get away. Let's take a look. Death Knight may still be nearby. The Keeper of the Grove wants to break free far enough just outside of sight range. So, well, there's the reveal, and the Keeper of the Grove is now gone. Beautiful play 
by check there as he now moves away purposely hiding back down south just a little bit the death knight now perhaps looking for where that keeper of the grove could be however the keeper of the grove is already That's back crazy. and well refreshed ready for more action Keeper of the Grove now continuing to go after the Kobo Taskmasters off over here. Death Knight has lost a little bit of units and lost a fair amount of mana trying to, well, keep these ghouls alive after, well, catching that Keeper of the Grove off guard in just a little or a couple of moments ago. Now, let's take a look at the overall strategy and, and what we can expect to see here. Skeletal Minion getting in a, a quick, easy kill. Meanwhile, Keeper of the Grove wants to get a kill onto a ghoul and does, in fact, get it. The Death Knight didn't use a Death Coil. That was a surprise. And the Keeper of the Grove is just going to get more and more kills still. Let's take a look at this. This ghoul down to 73 hit points. This one low hit point ghoul will get taken down. There is nope, no entangle there. Keeper of the Grove was unable to save it as the Death Knight, well, chases after that Keeper of the Grove, but the Keeper of the Grove should be able to get to level 5 fairly fast. This pretty much old school or 1.30 strategy of using the Keeper of the Grove in addition to, well, let's go ahead, gonna go ahead and use that Shadow Meld again, or the Cloak of Shadows. That Cloak of Shadows is also usable during the day, as we also see a Demon Hunter as that follow-up hero. Demon Hunter as the backup hero, very Our important at shutting down the amount of mana that is normally on the Lich. Keeper of the Grove is going to be trying to come across on the other side. You can see all of the ghouls are just absolutely afraid. There is an entangle onto a low hit point acolyte. Keeper of the Grove is going to be able to get in more damage again. Perhaps try to get another acolyte once again. This low hit point acolyte could get taken down. Let's take a look at Blight. Is it going to be enough to finish it off? Let's finish off that ghoul. There it goes as the Keeper of the Grove is going to shadow meld and hide again. Back off here. Mana burn onto the other units there as the archers are able to hold back. This one Keeper of the Grove is just in a great spot. Going to go ahead and entangle again as it goes ahead and shadow melds once more. Another low hit point acolyte. More acolytes constantly being retrained up. As you see a new acolyte come in. There's an entangle. Let's take a look. Um, are we going to see him attack another unit? Uh, remember, you can do this during the day. You can actually hide with the Cloak of Shadows during the day. Lost of Lumber right there. There's an Entangle. Let's take a look. There goes one Acolyte. The Keeper of the Grove down to 207 hit points will be able to get away. More Acolytes constantly being trained. WFZ losing Acolyte after Acolyte as you can take a look right there. And also losing some precious mining time. All right. Keeper of the Grove level 2 able to finish off an acolyte while on blight um, and i guess that's one of the problems where if you shorten the time that the entangle has but still keep the damage the same well the keeper of the grove can actually finish off acolytes in a simple pretty much dive maneuver Meanwhile, the Keeper of the Grove is now looking to back away again, already up to, what, 350 mana once more, or will be momentarily. Hippogriff Riders in the air, finishing off units, and we may see some more, well, Acolyte, um, Acol Acolyte Destruction and Acolyte Harass. Demon Hunter is sitting at level 2 with Potion of Invulnerability. We are going into Nature's Blessing now, as we also see a Tree of Life looking to get constructed. Gargoyles are going to be a large factor in this upcoming battle as well. Slaughterhouse is getting added in. Halls of the Dead has uh, not yet teched a Black Citadel, Citadel as we are going into Gargoyles. Keeper of the Grove now looking to pull back here. There is a bunch of enforcing, a bunch of units all across here. We could be looking at an Entangle or to try and separate all of these units. The Renegade Wizard will get finished off rather quickly. There it goes. And we see Devotion Aura on the Demon Hunter. Back over here at the 3 o'clock spot, Death Knight. Looking to clear up even more creep camps. Gargoyles versus Hippogriffs. The problem, though, is that Hippogriffs, well, once the archers dismount, the Hippogriffs are able to counter those Gargoyles as well. Home of Agility plus 2. Is the Demon Hunter going to pick that up? Mo definitely, yes. Extra damage, extra armor as the Demon Hunter gets up to level 3. Skeletal Minion looking to put pressure onto the Tree of Life. But more importantly, you know that it is there and you will be able to shut it down. Over here on the bottom right hand side of the map, we still see a good amount of creeps all available. Keeper of the Grove has to get away down to 436 hit points. Hippogriff Riders are already right there. Skeletal Minion will Our quickly finish that off, giving a little bit of experience, but well, forcing the disengage. 
gargoyles will be here ready to go i don't see that many crypt fiends out mass gargoyles in the air devotion aura that army is moving around rather fast if the hippogriff riders dismount and then you see uh, well the keeper of the grove and maybe the demon hunter with um orb of venom that might be enough to actually finish off some of those gargoyles as the gargoyles um, should be able to finish off those hippogriff riders if they do not dismount let's take a look at what's going to be happening here next tree of life ancient of war all of these units are going to be here ready to go uh, forces of nature are off over here as well the death knight do we see obsidian statues just yes, redo but no destroyers as of yet we are still at halls of the dead not yet at black citadel as we are going to be ready for this incoming fight demon hunter is going to be able to get any damage there you can go going after that damage there hippogriff fighter trying to dive in on a couple of units let's take a look at this the well, archers go get gonna go ahead and get it head and dismount there hippogriff riders and archers are just battling it out as the units are just pe pecking apart all of these units once again home field advantage for the night elf as reinforcements are coming rather quickly archers are trying to get away as they're able to continue to pick apart more and more units let's take a look at this well lich able to finish off a low hit point hippogriff and now what is going on with the rest of the ground unit there are no more gargoyles mana burn onto some units there archers are well completely gone and with that said only the fairy dragons are all that are left demon hunter trying to finish off a ghoul or two not going to be able to close in on that distance all too easily will be able to pick off this last one here but there was an earlier one up top which will be able to get away death knight lich 30 supply for WFZ's army going up against Czech's 44 supply army archers are gonna go ahead and get remounted onto those hippo onto those hippogriffs and we should see a, a good bit of engagement happening here in just a moment more archers still need to get added as you can take a look fairy dragons are all in position will be going after that renegade wizard right there a lot of damage being absorbed already will get finished off and it is gonna be a robe of magi all right, already up to 540 maximum mana on that Keeper of the Grove. There you go, summoning some units to try and break the Shadow Meld right there of all of those units. Once more, Hippogriff Riders finishing off the Brigands. You can see a couple of Enforcers are on the ground as the Demon Hunter gets to level 4. All right, opposite end of the field. Death Knight is at 4, Lich is at 3. This is going up against a 4, a 4-4 four, four, Keeper of the Grove and Demon Hunter. Pretty much... Um, well neck and neck now and so far check does have the supply advantage but undead has been um, has been known to come back from behind but not really when they are down a base this is generally a problem normally undead armies are a little bit stronger at this stage as we take a look well there goes a sentry ward quickly getting revealed there the majority of the main creep camps have been cleared out. Only the granite golems and the rock golems in the corner are all that are left. And you may not want to try and engage those yet. Also, this rock golem creep camp off to the north here. Check does have about an 18 supply advantage, but he does have more workers. And that means that his economic advantage is not double. It is only a 40% advantage. And we'll see how far he can press that. All right, and WFZ check 63 supply compared to 45 units are all still making their rounds again. Scroll of healing will be here, ready to go. No scroll of protection. Demon Hunter, however, with that devotion aura, Demon Hunter with nine armor, gonna go ahead and dive on into this position now. That's, this could potentially be a large amount of damage as you see Ents now coming in from the side as well. Scroll of Town Portal quickly being used. And how is, are all those units going to be, or where are they going to land? That is the question. They landed too far south there. There goes one Acolyte. Archers, are they going to go ahead and dismount? Yes, Archers go ahead and dismount here as the Hippogriffs now look to back away. Gargoyles, where are they going to try to fight next? As you can see, Mana Burn onto the Death Knight here. Mass Gargoyle army going against all of those units. Scroll of Healing trying to use to save up some of those units as well. But the Gargoyles are able to beat the Hippogriffs in a fight there. And you now see 55 supply compared to 43. Closing in on that distance just a little bit. There go some ends. They were taken out. Death Knight is at 4. Lich is still at 3. The economic advantage is still a major factor in this game. Check perhaps only winning because he has more resources. And bottom left hand side of the map. At 3,900 gold left in the gold mine compared to 42. The Keeper of the Grove has not gotten to level 5 
and at this point in stage, well, trying to only go for air units as a way to lessen the effect of the Keeper of the Grove. That is a rather interesting strategy. Entangle is now uh, essentially pretty much useless, only being able to entangle Death Knights and the Lich. That is not a good, good target since it does, since it is, well, significantly shorter. Acolyte now being brought over as well, will put down a Ziggurat in addition to haunting that gold mine. Meanwhile, Invisible Keeper of the Grove has made its way over and well, we all know what's gonna be happening here. Entangle, oh, no, no entangle, straight up summoning of the ends. Ghouls are now making their way over. This acolyte will get taken down. One acolyte now down. More acolytes being trained up. Another acolyte will get taken down here as well. As we see, another two of the three acolytes are down. A third one will fall here in just a moment as the keeper of the grove is just coming in with so much harass. Staff of Preservation, uh, excuse me, Staff of Teleportation will allow him to get out of that tight spot right there as we see all of those Ents now taken out. All right, Haunted Goldmine has yet to be started. WFC perhaps a little bit behind on resources, unable to, uh, yeah, unable to set up an expansion yet as he also needs to spend gold to just get Acolyte number back up to five. All right, Czech is taking this opportunity to rebuild his army, and he will be striking here in just a moment. It seems like Czech's army, even though it has been significantly larger in every single battle, still has not been able to do nearly as much or not been able to trade nearly as efficiently. All right, there you go. There goes one, uh, one hippogriff pretty much instantaneously taken out. Let's take a look. More battle coming across here. Ents just making their way over in a single file line just to see them destroyed. All right, Gargoyles right there. You see a beautiful Frost Nova going across multiple units, and now you're going to see all of those units turning back around, getting a little bit of distance back across multiple units. Lich gets another Frost Nova, and the Frost Nova may actually be the difference between victory and defeat here. That large AoE damage across multiple units. Death Knight now asking for a retreat here. Unholy Aura, and with the tactical retreat trying to get away, Death Knight does have level 2 Unholy Aura, I believe. Yeah, level 2 Unholy Aura in order to get away now. Meanwhile, Obsidian Statues still heading back once more. Level 5 on the Death Knight compared to a level 4 Keeper of the Grove. Death Knight has finally overtaken and, and gotten the experience advantage that he wants. Level 5, level 4 compared to a level 4, level 4, but the Demon Hunter and well is a little bit higher on experience now. All right, Ents now making its way over again. Let's take a look. It looks like this might be more free experience for that Death Knight. Death Knight doesn't really need the experience. It really should be going to that Lich as one Obsidian Statue or two Obsidian Statues just keep the, well, the army of the undead all topped off. All right, Mass Gargoyle Army to deal with Hippogriffs and Archers. N normally, it wouldn't sound like a very viable strategy, especially with the Devotion Aura, but... Um, somehow that Frost Nova, and maybe even if you had Carry On Swarm as a third, as a third ability, you could start to just push these Hippogriffs out of the sky and make them, um, well, suffer more damage. Still, let's take a look at this though. We are getting that Haunted Gold Mine. It is up and ready. No repairs. Nerubian Tower is now up. It is now two bases to two, and WFZ is looking good. Off this next attack. All right, let's take a look at this. Fighting on Blight is always useful. There is that Keeper of the Grove where all the units going to try and engage. Nerubian Tower is right there. One Ziggurat. Well, under under duress. Let's take a look at this. Go ahead and go ahead and engage. Let's take a look. No, well, a little bit of Frost Nova there, slowing down the attack. Lich could perhaps try and get in another Frost Nova on a bunch more Hippogriffs, and by slowing them down, that may be enough. As you can see, every single Hippogriff rider is or Hippogriff is getting taken out. However, all of the archers are not going to be able to poke back against those gargoyles as well. Fighting 53 supply compared to 38. WFZ, even with the home field advantage, doesn't look like it had enough here as we're taking a look at, well, a bunch of low hit point units, more Hippogriffs coming in from the back. No destroyers to deal with all of these forces of nature, and that's really the problem. No easy way to deal with this mass army of trees. 
All right, Obsidian Statue now heading back off to the north here. Ents now pushing their way through Death Knight, fighting on Blight, trying to get every last bit of health. Death Knight does have a potion of greater healing, maybe forced to use it. Lich still running around the corner, and is he going to be able to survive? Let's take a look at this. Death Knight survives ever so barely. Nerubian Tower, Staff of Teleportation, in order to get away. Frost Nova finishes off the Keeper of the Grove, and now, with that said, Keeper of the Grove is now gone. All right, Keeper of the Grove. Gun, Demon Hunter trying to engage here. Let's take a look. Lich is still here. One Obsidian Statue. So much healing going on as the Ents are still fighting their way through. Is the Lich going to be able to able to get their way back out? Gargoyle is now joining back out onto the field, trying to perhaps finish off some of these units again. All right, let's take a look at this. Death Knight looking to finish off some units. 44 supply compared to 47. There goes a little bit more experience once more. And the Lich still sitting at level 4. It looks like he's been just shy of level 4 for quite some time. Uh, or level 5. Now, level 5 on the Lich, level 5 on the Death Knight, that potion of greater healing having a profound impact. 49 supply compared to 34. Economic advantage. More mining needs to get underway. Demon Hunter is at 5. Keeper of the Grove is also a 5. And resurrected at the Tavern. You cannot afford to have your main primary hero out of the battle for that long. And it looks like that Keeper of the Grove is going to be ready for some action. Meanwhile, let's take a look. Undead total resources or current resources undead wfz is um, trying to just train up as many units as he can 38 supply he needs to get more class. units more obsidian statues perhaps still sitting at halls of the dead not really going for tier three and he doesn't have anything training at the crypt i am absolutely dumbfounded Our right now as he really needs more units he's not been on top of his macro and even though warcraft 3 isn't a macro based game you need to constantly be training up units still all right, let's take a look at this. Gargoyle is going straight after some units. There goes one. Death Knight shows up to the party. Meanwhile, Mana Burn onto some of those units there. Gargoyles are looking to try and head back. Perhaps they should be have been researching stone form, so allowing them to stay in the or stay on the ground. Death Coil keeps the Lich alive ever so barely as it tries to finish off more units. No Orb of Corruption since we are not at a Black Citadel. And with that, well, there's, you're not seeing nearly as much usefulness there. All right, Lich, back out here, ready to go. Let's take a look. Gargoyle is trying to finish off more units. Looks as though, yes, one Hippogriff Rider will get taken down. The Lich still looking to perhaps do another Dark Ritual here in just a moment. Mana burn as the Lich unable to, well, sacrifice any units just for mana. Gargoyles are going after those Hippogriff Riders. And it looks as though, what is that? Staff of Teleportation to get back in. Keeper of the Grove is back in play as the, well, as the Gargoyles are looking to fight back against more units. All right, we could be looking at more detonation. Gargoyles heading back again. 35, eight, 35 supply compared to 38. No, a, a little bit of mining. One Spirit Tower is right here. Wisp are also over here as well. As you're going to see, well, a, perhaps a little bit of a, of a shift once again. WFZ needs more units. You're going to see an unsummoning of this gold mine. Acolytes being brought over. Goblin Shredder joining in on the fight. And we're going to take a look. A bunch of Acolytes trying to get away. J jumping straight after the Keeper of the Grove. Both the Demon Hunter and the Keeper of the Grove have Orbs of Venom. So that damage over time is going to really start to eat through. Let's take a look. Look at this. Demon Hunter down to 333 hit points. Needs to get away. Acolytes joining in on the fight. And it's going to be able to start finishing off some of these units as well. Obsidian statues. Relatively um, high on hit points, but low on mana. That is going to be a problem. Death Knight uses Potion of Lesser and Vulnerability in time. Does not finish off the Keeper of the Grove, though. As the Keeper of the Grove gets some Moonwell juice to try and stay alive. All right. Death Knight back down to 200 or back up to 256 hit points. More Ziggurath are getting added here. This is pretty much now free experience for the undead dead army as there is relatively low chance that any of these units or any of the undead units will get taken out all right there you go more and more experience getting added lich back up to 440 on blight level three unholy aura most likely yes 150 percent regeneration add in the fact that you're on blight so you have 350 percent regeneration in addition to your natural hero regeneration, that's the reason why that Lich is regenerating so many hit points alongside that Death Knight. The Essence of Blight also helping out quite a bit as well. WFZ has been fighting every single battle, using every bit of his army to stay even, trading efficiently. And with that said, it looks like he has come out ahead. The problem, the downside is I would rather face a level 6 Death Knight over a level 6 Demon Hunter any day of the week. The ultimates, 
if the Night Elf player, if Night Elf check can get to level 6 on this Demon Hunter, all of a sudden all bets are off. Tranquility also on the Keeper of the Grove, a very big issue as well. Death Coil, Frost Nova trying to save some units. Lich was all, all the way in the back. Big mana burn right there. Engaging as well. More Ents now joining in. Entangle. Death Knight could be in trouble. Death Knight taking a large bit of damage. He's trying to get away. Acolytes need to help move away. Unable to do that and the Death Knight looks like it will get taken down. There it goes. One Lich is all that is standing between this army and Lost now as the Keeper of the Grove. Um, well, as the, well, as the Keeper of the Grove summoning those Ents, not having Destroyers. Once again, a major issue at dealing with all of these Ents here. All right, Lich going to get taken down. There it is. That's pretty much going to be the game. Metamorphosis, another flip-flop right there. Uh, Metamorphosis, um, what, Chaos-based orbit damage even with all the slow even with all that damage there this is not looking out well checks in at 24 supply compared to 35 wfz losing much of his army as well the just looking to try to finish off some of those units there let's take a look a lot of well piercing damage there keeper of the grove could try and staff of preservation this demon hunter in just a second let's take a look at it more damage more chaos damage no acolytes repairing at all in come the ends keeper of the grove now with tranquility that demon hunter is looking strong all right going after the haunted gold mine let's take a look back the other side death knight is out onto the field what is going on it is well what's going on here death knight is back in wait, wait a second hold on is there enough of an army death knight could end up getting traffic jammed just a little bit obsidian statue gets mana burned to death as the demon hunter is still ready to do a lot more damage trying to finish off more units another mana burn there no more easy healing demon hunter now trying to back away as the demon hunter is down to 309 hit points death knight now back on blight needs to heal up again let's take a look at this here Obs uh, well more damage coming through nerubian towers death knight is going to get entangled let's take a look at this mana burn finishes off and that will be the game a last effort play by the death knight but it fell short check with the victory thanks for watching thanks for listening hope you guys enjoyed it